but we're gonna talk about, like I said, now music. Now, you know, I tell people never underestimate the power of music. Okay, you know, I, in the '90s, okay, we started seeing, uh, 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 like I said, a new era where a lot of rappers and uh, R&B artists were promoting Fortune 500 products. And what really surprised, you know, the world was when Lee Iacocca, a billionaire Caucasian uh, businessman, went to Long Beach, into the hood of Long Beach, and got Snoop Dogg, a validated gang member, pulled him out of the hood and made him spokesperson for Chrysler. You know, people are scratching their head, you know. I'm, I'm sure the stockholders are scratching their head. What is this guy doing? You know, this prestigious company getting this thug to be, you know, a spokesperson over this prestigious company. But you don't think there was any research or data behind that? Of course there was, okay? You know, see, there was a guy named Dr. Roy H. Williams. You know, he had wrote a book called Thought Particles and does some research on the power of music. And he was going around to these Fortune 500 companies saying, hey, you need to put this type of music, you know, in your ads. You know, these artists have a, a, a very powerful fan base. And, you know, they could be easily influenced by these artists. You know, like I said, we got the Going Dumb movement, you know, E-40. And, like I said, Mac Dre, that got a whole, you know, mainstream of you wanting to go dumb and stupid. So, you know, he was teaching this way back in the 90s. But he broke it down like this. He said, you know, we have two parts of our brain. We have our left brain and we got our right brain. So you're listening to me right now with your left brain. Okay, that's the conscious part of your mind. Now, what is your right brain doing? Your right brain's picking up all the background sounds, okay? Your right brain's recording me like a 24-hour audio and video camera. Did you know that your right brain never forgets anything, that you never forget anything? You say, yeah, you always forget things all the time. No, you don't. Your left brain does, your right brain doesn't. That's why when you lose something, a lot of times people say, well, can you relax and, and, and just, you know, sit down and trace back your steps? Why are they telling you to do that? Because when you relax, right, you shut down your left brain so your right brain can kick in. And you say, oh, I know I left that, I left that under the stairs. You see? But as I'm talking right now, you could shut me down, okay? Because, I, I, you know, I'm just talking. Ain't no music playing. You know, you're like, man, this is going on way too long. I think I'm going to shut off this video now. You can shut me down. But you know what they say, scientifically proven. If I put on a beat, when I put on a rhythm, okay, that you like, okay, you might think that you're shutting me down. You're like, you know what? I, I, I like that beat and the rhythm. I'm listening to what Ray has to say, but that beat and that rhythm is tight. But see, as you're listening to the beat and the rhythm, what they're saying is that the words that I will say will bypass your left brain and go into your right brain. Okay, now think about it. You know, a lot of people say, well, I just listen to music, you know, for the beat or just the rhythm. You know, I know a lot of that crazy stuff. I don't listen to any of that. And that's true. A lot of people are listening to it, you know, just for the beat. Your left brain is. But listen here, all those words, you know, I'm a pimp, I'm a gangster, you know, I, 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 like I said, I'm, I'm, I'm a G, I hate the police, all these negative words, you know, like I said, as you listen to it for the beat, they will bypass your left brain and go into your right brain, to your subconscious. You will say, big deal, you know, it's in my subconscious, so what? But did you know, as you sleep, your right brain still works. And what's in your right brain will transfer back to your left brain and you'll begin to believe and understand the messages, not even knowing you're believing and understanding them. So you listen to all this negative music about anger and all of a sudden you wake up mad with a fizz face, just angry at the world. You know, people ask me, why you mad? I don't know why I'm mad. Don't ask me that. That's making me madder when you keep asking me that. We'll see, you know, I, I don't think, like I said, they're just angry. All of a sudden, you know, they want to go down to the mall and get a skeleton shirt. Why do you want to get a skeleton shirt? I don't know why I want to get a skeleton shirt. I just want to get a skeleton shirt. You see, subconsciously, they've taken all of these messages in and it reprogrammed their beliefs without them knowing it. And that's the power of music. Music has the power 
to reprogram it, reprogram your beliefs without you even knowing it. Okay. So, I, like I said, I'm, I'm gonna take you now to uh, a little animation I created just to kind of reinforce, you know, uh, this message. Here you got the typical you just grooving to the beat, just grooving to the rhythm, you know, not paying attention to the words, you know, just enjoying the flow. But unknown to him, these messages coming through from the lyrics of just anger and lust and pride and violence and just anarchy and, and greed and drugs and rebellion are entering into him. You know, he's just, like you said, he's just flowing. But they're bypassing his left brain, the conscious part of his mind, into the right brain, his subconscious. And they're going to be just harbored in there. People say, well, big deal. It's, you know, it's in my right brain. So what? It's not doing anything. But during the sleep cycle, what's in our right brain is going to be transferred back to the left brain to the conscious part of our mind. And when it comes from the subconscious to the conscience, during that process, he's gonna start believing and understanding these messages, not even knowing he's believing and understanding them. So these are the messages of, of lust and, and crime and just arrogance and anger and pride just being programmed into him. And in the morning, you know, he's waking up. He has an attitude. You know, he's angry. You know, he's ready to unleash on the world. Okay, I hope that reinforced the message. But I got something else. I got a, a, a friend of mine, okay, that I met years ago that was incarcerated for a double homicide, actually, at the Youth Authority. You know, uh, when I was working there, he was there. And, you know, uh, he since then has changed his life. He's a pastor now, got his doctorate degree and everything else. I mean, he has a powerful story called uh, Murder Forgiven that you can see on our YouTube station. But Dr. Levon Davis, I remember we had met up when he had got out. And he was telling me, like I said, he was a youth when he went in for murder at 14 years of age, got out when he was about 24. And, you know, I, I remember him, you know, telling me about this one song that he said really helped to pump him up to commit the murder that he did, the two murders that he did. So we're going to go in quick. I'm going to play the song, a real short clip of the song, and then we're going to go into a short interview with him. But pay close attention to what he's saying. You know, think about this whole, you know, left brain, right brain as he's, you know, talking. A little bit about that song. That song, since you know, I was uh, maybe 11 or 12, I think, is when I really uh, <laughs> idolized that that song. Uh, it just talked about 187, uh, murder, uh, the police, uh, different lyrics in that song. I remember one night laying in my bed, and I was trying to pump myself up to the point where nothing could affect me, nothing uh, would, would damage my mindset uh, towards making money and selling these drugs. And I can remember quoting the lyrics uh, of that song uh, in my bed one night and literally asking myself, you know, could I commit murder? Could I shoot somebody? Uh, what would it take to do it? And I remember convincing myself, yeah, you can do it. It, it. It's nothing. And I played the song over and over and over again in my head. And 
it really uh, put me into the mindset to believe that uh, pulling the trigger is nothing, stabbing a person is nothing. It set the tone uh, to let me know that, yeah, this can be done. I literally believe uh, the very words that Ice-T uh, was saying, and it helped me uh, become desensitized to lie. So did you hear what he said? He said that he would listen to the music over and over, and he literally started to believe the very words that Ice-T was saying, and it helped him become desensitized to life. See, music is not just music. Music is very spiritual. So you look at, you know, these different demons out here. You have Baphomet, you got Pan, and you see a lot of these artists paying homage to these demonic spirits. Why? Because these demonic spirits are basically allowing them to have the success that they're having as long as they keep that open portal and give their allegiance unto these spirits which indirectly gives allegiance and praise to Lucifer to Satan so you know you have to kind of you know get an understanding of what these artists are doing I mean look at Kanye West and you look at Rihanna I mean look look at these pants that I'm about to show you in this clip you see just clearly you see the pentagram and you see Baphomet which is a androgynous being you know, that means it's male and female, which is the reason why we see Kanye West, you know, wearing a skirt. See, this is promoting homosexuality, bisexuality, everything that opposes God's word. And that is their goal. That is how they give Lucifer his respect and his worship is to go against the commandments of the word of God, which is the Holy Bible. Even in the acting field, what we're seeing is a lot of these artists are getting involved in witchcraft, where they're allowing these demonic spirits to possess them so that they become better actors. What they are is basically drawing a lot of times the familiar spirits of the person that they're portraying into them so that they can do these parts in a more realistic manner. I'm, I'm like I said, don't just take my word for it, but here's an interview uh, with Denzel Washington and, and Oprah Winfrey. We're going to go to that clip now. How are so many of Hollywood's most famous actors and actresses able to be so amazingly effective and convincing in their performances? That guy was so electrifying that it came through the television. How is it that they can move us to laughter, tears, or anger at the drop of a hat? Are they truly gifted with natural talent, as many suggest? You see this and you just... You're dazzled by their talent. Do they possess a creative streak of genius that is unknown to most men? Or unknown to most men, are they in fact possessed? Is it possible that these actors and actresses are possessed by demonic spirits who have a specific agenda to fulfill? Oscar award-winning actor Denzel Washington told 60 Minutes exactly how he brings forth his best performances. Basically what I did was got on my knees and sort of communicated with the spirits and when I came out I was in charge powerful scene powerful scene it, it was I couldn't have acted that I couldn't have written that down and made a decision to play that what are you gonna smoke that nope you are <laughs> hell if I am yes yeah Jesus free yeah Jesus free the one-woman entertainment empire known as Oprah has strong affiliations with the demonic realm. The most familiar face on television says, You can not only use your body and physical self. This is how I see acting. I ask my body to be the carrier for the spirits of those who have come before me in a way that is most meaningful to the character. Just become the vehicle for that character. Calling out for these entities to take her over so that she may become a sparkling puppet, Oprah admits of her work before the camera. I tried to empty myself and let the spirit inhabit me. With her global influence, her shows have become a smorgasbord for the New Age agenda. They were saying that when Denzel Washington was playing uh, Malcolm X, they said cut. And when they said cut, he kept going. And he was basically reciting a speech from Malcolm X that he, he didn't even know. But that spirit, that familiar spirit, demonic spirit from Malcolm X, had possessed him and allowed him basically to take on the exact characteristics of Malcolm X. I have a friend of mine that's a former vampire, 
you know, Brother Obed. And, you know, this guy's, you know, generational, was a generational vampire. A lot of times, you know, people think that, you know, vampires are just, you know, science fiction. No, that is a real demonic occult that goes back centuries and centuries, all the way back to Babylon. Okay. But he said when he had moved to Sacramento, you know, he went to take over a covenant, you know, uh, basically a, a, a demonic house church. And he was telling me that they would have special assignments to Christian churches, you know, because they said, man, they could, they knew the Bible. Surprisingly, they, they knew the Bible. They said they can go talk Christianese, but said their objective was to go into the churches and break up the prayer chains, right? They wanted to cause division between the pastor and the assistant pastor. They said they always wanted to be a part of the music. He said music is very powerful. They want to be in the prayer lines to lay hands on the sick. And he was saying that unless you were, you know, uh, really filled with the Holy Spirit, you wouldn't be able to discern these individuals. He said, I could take you to some churches right now and show you that a pastor that is a Satanist. You know? So the Bible tells us, you know, he says, we're not to be unaware of the devil's schemes. You know, that's why we got to study to show ourselves approved. See, the more we draw close to the Lord, the more he draws close to us. And he'll give us that discernment so we can basically understand the things that are not of him. So you can't underestimate the power of music because music is full of words, right? Now, you know, the Bible says in Proverbs that life and death on the power of the tongue. Now, you know, like I said, we talk about words. You know, what is the power in a word? Okay, what does a word do? A word creates a thought. A thought creates an imagination. An imagination creates a desire, which can go on and create an obsession. If I say hot chocolate chip Toll House cookies, you know, some of y'all are smiling right now. Now, I didn't bring forth any cookies to you, and I didn't show you any cookies. But that imagination is going to work, you know? You got some people out there got an obsession with chocolate chip cookies that just kickstarted me just saying that word, hot chocolate chip Toll House cookies. So we see, you know, the power of words. See, Joshua 1 and 8, you know, in the Word of God, in the Old Testament, says, meditate on the Word of God day and night and you will have good success. See, the Satan always tries to do in reverse what God does, you see? He tries to get you, tries to be a copycat. He tries to get you to and us to meditate on his words. Why? Because like I said, as you meditate on words, like we're talking about the hot chocolate chip Toll House cookies, they can become a desire within your heart. That's why we gotta guard our ear gates of what we're listening to. Okay, and see the devil does it so crafty. You know, if he put out there all the satanic and brutal stuff about going dumb and going stupid without any music, you know, without any rhythm, people say, man, get that out of here. But see, you lace it up with a beat and a rhythm and fancy videos, people are gonna draw to it. Just like if somebody wants to kill somebody, they're gonna take, you know, a, a capsule that says cyanide on it and say, take this, I wanna kill you. They're not gonna do that. What are they gonna do? They might take it and put it in some chocolate, right? Or in some food and then give it to the person. Yeah, that's what the devil does. See, he takes the cyanide, which is his words, right? And he puts it in the chocolate, which is the, the rhythm and the beat, you see? And the word, the world is taking to it like never before. You know, we got music out there talking about killing and raping. Jay-Z's, uh, one of his new ta songs, talking about, you know, uh, raping and, and, and pillaging vi uh, villages with women and children. In black convertibles, I kill a block, I murder the avenues. I rape and pillage a village, women and children. I rape and pillage a village, women and children. I rape and pillage a village, women and children. You see, I played that at the county jail during a workshop, and the guys, even at the county jail, couldn't believe it. They're like, man, I like that song. I didn't even know it said that. See, music has a hypnotic effect, you see? We go, like I said, I remember I was out in Vallejo, 
and I put up a, just a uh, like a, a picture of Little Wayne, and the girls went berserk. Okay, and one little girl said, "That's my baby's daddy." You know, that's my baby. I mean, so I had to pause the class right there. I said, "Young lady, are you familiar with the words that Little Wayne has in his songs?" Oh yeah, I got his downloads and. You know, all the songs, I know all the songs, you understand he talks about women like they ain't got a soul? You know, he talks about how he, you know, beats on them and uses them sexually and then, you know, leaves them up on the curb and laughs at them because they thought they was going to get his money, but they get no money. And she's just listening. And I said, you know, let me play, not play, but let me let you read some lyrics of his, okay? These are lyrics from one of his songs, okay? And these are the clearest, cleanest lyrics I could find says uh, hello world lyrics uh hello world i'm your mf troublemaker hello world i'm your mf troublemaker i ain't a peacemaker i'm the peace taker i'm very destructive watch me break you yeah i love to smell that blood b call me the devil what the h e double hockey sticks that was, yeah, and you could call me Young Money Streets, and you can see me for all the Young Money beef. I'm the troublemaker. And I looked at that young lady, and I said, young lady, you know, I want to know, why do you want that, this man as your baby's daddy? And she's just like, listen, like she never heard the words before. Now, these are supposed to be her favorite songs, but now she's listening to it without the hypnotic beat rhythm. And she looks at me, and she says, I don't know. And I went to the next young lady, asked her the same thing. I don't know. See, it was a hypnotic effect. You know, witchcraft. You know, Galatians 3, I remember Paul's talking about who has put witchcraft on you to stopping you from believing the truth of Christ. You see, this is how the devil works. You know, in Ephesians 2, he talks about he's the prince of the air. Okay, and what's in the air? Airwaves. And what's flowing through the airwaves? Music and videos. Now, music could be used for a good thing. Don't get me wrong, because see, David used music to war off the demons from Saul. Okay? So music could be a powerful effect, just like we're talking about the negative. Now, just think if you get some godly music, right, filled with scriptures and put that into you. And that bypasses your left brain, gets into your right brain. Now the word of God while you're sleeping gets transferred into your left brain and you begin to believe and understand those messages, okay? And what does Joshua 1.8 say? It says you're going to have good success. You see, so we got to have a strategy. We got to use discipline, you know? Just like if you want to be a world-class boxer, you can't just be sitting up on the couch eating haagen ice cream and down in Mountain Dews and, and chips and watching fight tapes. No. You gotta be disciplined. A person that wants to be a world-class fighter, what is he gonna do? He's gonna take the skin off the chicken, he's gonna eat the vegetables and, uh, you know, just uh, protein bars and, you know, peanut butter and drink a lot of water. Why? Because he wants peak performance when he goes out, right, for his performance, for his fight, you see? But, you know, we understand that. That makes common, that's common sense, right? Because like I said, you know, we know garbage in, garbage out, especially when it comes to our bodies. But we don't, a lot of times people don't pay attention to our mental diet. We just look at something, you know, that sounds good. You know, just like an undisciplined person, whatever tastes good, they're gonna eat. And we know what happens, you know, that people just like to eat junk food all day because it tastes good. Pretty soon they start looking like junk food, right? But see, it's just like with our minds. You can't do that. You can't just, well, that sounds good, so I'm gonna put it in my mind. You know, now you got lust problem. Well, that sounds good. I'm just gonna, you know, put it in my mind. Now you got an anger problem. You see, now we wonder why these strongholds are taking over our lives. You know, the Bible says, in all thy getting, get understanding. So you gotta have a strategy every day, okay, to guard yourself from this negative mentality. See, God loves you. He has a plan for your life, you know? And like I said, the more you draw closer to God, the more he's going to draw closer to you. But the key thing is meditate on the word of God day and night. You're going to have good success. See, Psalms 37, 4 says, you know, when you delight yourself in the Lord, he will give you the desires of your heart. That doesn't mean win the lotto and, 
you know, marry a movie star. No, he's going to give you the desires. He's going to give you a desire what to do and what not to do. See, Proverbs 16 says, when we commit our ways to the Lord, he will establish our thoughts. See, this is how God speaks to us through our thoughts and our desires. See, Satan speaks to people. He speaks to us through thoughts and desires, right? You go to a jail, you know, a lot of times those people are in there. Why? Because they had a thought and a desire to do what they did, you see? But like I said, when you meditate on God's word, he's going to give you his thoughts and his desires, and you're going to have success. See, that, that is the key. You know, that, that's the, the main point that I want you to remember. Meditate on the Word of God, and you're going to have good success. we got to really watch what we, what we allow to come in through our ear gates, right? And into, like I said, to our eye gates. You know, even our, our like I said, our, our mouth gate. These are all entrances into the soul. You know, but this go it goes deeper than that. You know, with this music, okay? How many of you heard of backward mass messaging? Okay. okay. Now I'm going to show you the father of backward mass messaging was Aleister Crawley. And you know, look at the screen. You know, he was born October 12, 1875. Uh, died December 1st, 1947. Now, born Edward Alexander Crawley was an English occultist, writer, mountaineer poet and yogi and possible spy he was an influential member of occult organizations now you look at this caucasian guy and you think like well why would jay-z pay homage to this guy why is little wayne you know ozzy osbourne the beatles i mean they paid homage to this guy deep respect they have sometimes they have this, his uh like i said his name in their songs Okay? But we're going we're gonna to go into that. Most of Crawley's adult life was dedicated to indulging in everything he believed God would hate. Performing sex magic. Now, what is sex magic? Now, I've talked to Satanists about sex magic. Now, this is a ritual. All sex magic is, is fornication. Sex before marriage. See, they say a lot of times these demons want you to have sex before marriage because why? They said, this opens up a portal to the soul. They said, when two people have sex before marriage, you might as well lay out a pentagram on the mattress, on a bed, because it's a demonic ritual, okay? And they said, when, when, they, when they're when having sexual activities, what it does is opens up the portal of these individuals to allow legal right for these demonic spirits to come into them. And also, it formulates soul ties. That means whatever spirit is in the other person will cross into that person. That's why you see these women with two black eyes, you know, still running after the man. I love them. I love them. People are like, man, why is she so stupid? But ain't that she's stupid. It's that there's a demonic soul tie. That spirit in her, right, which crossed over into her, craves the spirit in him. You see, there's a soul tie, the spirit, the demon that was now put in her through that sexual activity is tied to the demon in him. You see, and they can't even understand. It's like a magnetic spiritual force. Okay, so it's called sex magic. So he also said taking heroin, opium, hashish, peyote, and cocaine, invoking spirits, and even once offering himself to the Russian authorities to help destroy Christianity. He wrote volumes of books that he believed were dictated to him by a spirit from ancient Egypt called Iwas. Now listen to this. To worship me, take wine and strange drugs. Remember that opens up the demonic spiritual realm. Okay, the spirit conveniently told him, lust, enjoy all things of sense and rapture. Fear not that any God shall deny thee of this. There again, him trying to take the fear of God away from us. Okay, because why? The fear of God brings forth what? Wisdom. And without wisdom, we become a fool. When we become a fool, we become a tool, right? So, you know, if we look in, like I said, uh, you know, I remember when I was uh, freelance for Black Entertainment Television down in Los Angeles, I remember walking into a Christian bookstore, you know, and I remember, it's like the Lord led me in there, and I remember seeing this book called Dancing with Demons. And the, the author was, you know, had been involved in the entertainment industry, 
and was talking about a demon that a lot of these artists would worship called Pan. And as I see today, a lot of these artists worship that demon called Pan and Baphomet. Okay? And, you know, what they believe is this. Okay? They believe that, you know, if, you know, a lot of these artists are, are sold, you know, this ritual that, hey, if you pay homage to Pan and Baphomet, you'll become rich. You'll become very famous. Okay? And, they, and these spirits will give you the music, they'll give you the beats, the rhythms, and everything else. Well, how do they do this? Well, what they would do, how do they channel these spirits? Well, the key is they got to channel these spirits. And how do you think they channel the spirits? They smoke marijuana, or use different types of drugs, opens up the portal of their soul, and these spirits come in and will give, may give them a flow. Like I said, you see in the Notorious Big documentary, give me some more weed and he would just flow. And you know, a lot of the artists, I got quotes from them within this book from different news articles and they will talk about how, like I said, they have to use drugs, you know? Uh, Dr. Dre calls it the chronic. Snoop Dogg's always in the studio. That's why they're always smoking weed in the studio because they believe that it opens up the portal of their soul, allow these spirits to come in, and all of a sudden they're flowing. The beats come. The rhythms come. You know, we have, like I said, I did a, um, an interview with Chris Hudson. Now, Chris Hudson used to run with the hip-hop elite. You know, he used to write movies for New Line Cinema. He said that he was one of the individuals that used to put a lot of the demonic symbols in the back of the videos. You know, and he tells you, you know, why they do this. So, we're gonna play that clip right now from Chris Hudson. I, mo I wrote most of my scripts. Well, let me say this. Most every script that I wrote, I was under the influence. I always, I would always smoke, I would always smoke marijuana before I started writing any of my scripts. But be above and beyond that, most of my scripts I would write at um, my girlfriend's house. And my girlfriend was a Haitian young lady and at the house, that um, I would write at, they would practice voodoo there. Her, her father was into practicing voodoo. You know, he'd, he'd have different things around the house that he, you know, was part of his different voodoo practices, like, you know, cut up hundred dollar bills, and you know, you couldn't whistle in the house, all these types of crazy things, because these things would conjure up the spirits. And so I was in a very, um, I was in a demonic environment, bottom line. And this had an amazing effect upon my personal life. I didn't really realize what was going on until one day I looked and, and looked in the mirror. And when I looked in the mirror, I looked in my eyes. And when I looked in my eyes, I realized that there was something there that was not me, but it was with me. And I smiled and I realized that whatever it was that was with me, was the reason why I was being so successful with writing my scripts, with working on my music, because at that time as well, I was working on my music career. And um, my manager happened to be the sister of the biggest DJ in New York at that time, period. You know, you had to be on his tape to be the dig it. I mean, it was the, my, my manager was the sister of DJ Clue. If anybody knows who DJ Clue was, he was some, you know, he was the biggest DJ in New York, you know, late 90s, beginning of 2000. He signed with Rockefeller Records and those guys. And that was who my manager was his sister. So I was completely connected on every direction you could think of to really um, be just successful, whether it was in the movies or with the, um, or with the music. And all of this came to me not of my own accord or just because I was mega talented, but is because I was at that point possessed by demonic. I was just I was possessed by I was under demon possession. That's just the bottom line of the situation. And I realized it. Be above and beyond even what I spoke about when you heard my testimony. I moved around a lot of guys that um, people would be scared of, and a lot of guys that you know would look like they 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 were uh, a part of NFL football teams, if you could imagine what I'm saying, you know, really big guys. And I started realizing that, you know, people started giving me a lot more respect, not just because of me being successful, but I had a different ear that was surrounding me. And I saw that 
people started being fearful of me, just not to look. They would not want to look me in my eyes. They wouldn't want to look me in my eyes. And so once again, I realized that whatever that was that was in me, it was giving me the respect on the street that I needed for it to be to be big in the music industry. It was giving me the um, the the words and the skill that I needed to write the scripts. It was just the means of my success. But it came a point. So in my you life. see how, like I said, these spirits, you know, would come in and give him this talent. Now we're getting the backward mass messaging. Okay. Now, what they believed was that these demonic spirits were so intelligent, okay, that when they would come in, they would write something forward, right, the vocals forward, but backwards they could make it say something else. Now, why would they want to do that? Remember we talking about the left brain and the right brain? Well, you remember that song, Another One Bites the Dust? They played a lot of different football games. Well, backwards... That song says smoking marijuana. Now, so scientists were interviewing people, you know, that had, were, you know, like I said, had, uh, were listening to that song, that that was their favorite song. They said, you know, every time I listen to that song, I want to get hot. You know, even they wouldn't get hot, it just it seems fun to get hot, you know? They didn't understand that, but what they, discovered was that even though a message, when we're talking about the left brain, the right brain, even though a message is coming backwards and it bypasses your left brain backwards, smoking marijuana is fun backwards, when it gets to your right brain, it flips it around forward. And it's during your sleep cycle, it sends it back to your left brain and you begin to believe and understand that message. All of a sudden, man, smoking marijuana is fun. Smoking marijuana is fun. You see? So this was called the law of reversal, okay? And like I said, this is called law of reversal and we see that in the satanic church. See, Crowley, the guru of modern Satanism and mentor of many rock and rap groups, taught in his magic handbook, Magic in Theory and Practice, he taught a concept known as, here it is, the law of reversal. Let him learn to think backwards. In many satanic churches, they will recite the Lord's Prayer, but they will start with Amen and then say Nema. And then we'll recite the whole prayer backwards. And, and it goes down and says, let him learn to write backwards. Let him learn to walk backwards. I ain't going to deal with that now. I think some of you know where I'm going with that. Let him learn to listen to phonographic records in reverse. See, witchcraft, witchcraft works off deception, you see? So, like I said, as you're listening to a song forward, you know, you never know. Like I said, in the spirit realm, backwards and forwards is the same, is the same thing, you know? So, I'm going to play a, a, a video clip of a backward mass song right now from Jay-Z. Six, six, six. I guess I wouldn't be very entertaining on the stage. So Sasha comes out <laughs> and she's fearless. You know, she can she can do things that I cannot do when I'm in rehearsal. I mean, I can try, but then it just doesn't happen. I can sing notes and sing strong and do all these things that when I'm just by myself, I can't do. And I remember right before I performed, I raised my hands up and it was kind of the first time I, I felt something else come into me and I knew that was going to be my coming out night for the BET Awards. Now a lot of artists are doing this. You know, Nicki Minaj. Um... A crazy boy who lives in me and 
He says the things that I don't want to say. <laughs> he was born, you know, just a few months ago. I think he was born out of rage. He was conceived in rage. So he bashes everyone. He threatens to beat people and he's violent. I don't want to blame him. I, I, I ask him to leave, but he can't. He's here for a reason. People have brought him out. People conjured him up. Now he won't leave. Um, Katy Perry. You know Hollywood can be a really hard town to try to break into. And what kind of advice would you give to them before they embark on this incredible journey? Um, thank you, and I hope you answer my question. When I was 15, um, because I grew up in uh, you know a household where all I ever did was listen to gospel music, and my parents are both traveling ministers, and so I kind of sang about you know, what was going on in my life at 15, and that's how I got introduced to the music industry. Because I swear I wanted to be like the Amy Grant of music, Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't work out, and so I sold my soul to the devil. Uh, Justin Bieber. A lot of these artists are doing this, okay? And you see a lot of times they're paying homage to, to Satan and to Lucifer through hand signs. And of course, Rihanna is in the building. Hey, Angie. Through, through. <laughs> I cannot believe it's been so long that we I have know. done this. You know, I am misunderstood a lot at, at times. Uh, my music, my image, people have their whole... Uh, their whole thing about me, whether it be a d me being a devil worshiper or whatever, guys, them reading into my hand over my eye on my album cover. <laughs> Why is your hand over your eye? Because I'm, <laughs> I'm a devil worshiper. What are you talking about? You know, through the, the triple six sign, to the to the horn sign, and to the Illuminati pyramid sign. Okay. And basically that pyramid sign is what is a delta. That's a spiritual door. That's basically saying I'm allowing a door entrance of the spirit to come in. You see, you know, we see now where we got, um, uh, what was the basketball player's name? We got Kobe Bryant and you got LeBron James before every game. They'll throw up a triple six sign, they'll throw up a Baphomet sign. This is dur during, like I said, before the game. They're on camera and they'll throw up a pyramid sign. You see? So basically saying they're allowing these demonic forces paying tribute to them to come inside them to empower them. It's funny, he didn't start, you know, didn't win a championship until he started doing that. Okay? Remember, there's a, always a high interest to pay when the devil gives you a gift. So you don't, don't want to play with that. You know, I got testimony of many Satanists that will tell you that. Okay? That many Satanists that wish they weren't Satanists anymore. Okay? But they'll, they'll tell you, man, this is the biggest mistake I've ever made in my life. But if you are a Satanist, you can't come out of that. Don't believe the lie. We want to thank you for watching. Remember, on our resource page, we have more videos that go in depth and articles that go in depth what we're talking about today. And also, if you can get the book, Thug Mentality Exposed, you know, the book's only uh, $12.50 plus shipping and handling, or you can get it on Kindle for, I think, I believe it's $7.99 uh, or something like that. And, you know, like I said, that'd be a blessing to us. Now, if you can't afford it, don't worry. You can read the entire book in its entirety online. But when you purchase a book, it really helps us to with the, the prison ministry and the juvenile hall ministry and our street ministry. And what we do is we get these books at cost. And when we do that, it's not profit to us. We go and just buy the books, uh, basically wholesale from the publisher, and we pass them out at Juvenile Hall in the jail you know, during the one-on-one -on -one counseling sessions and in the group sessions. So if you can do that, make a donation, uh, buy some of our uh, DVDs. I know you can watch them for free online, but if you can buy one, take it to a church group or to a school, I guarantee you it would be a great blessing to them. So we just want to say God bless you. And remember, our mission statement at thugexposed.org is we're bringing awareness, knowledge, wisdom, and a mission by exposing the truth behind the hype. Okay, based off Ephesians 5.11. God bless you. This is Rayford Johnson.
How you doing? This is Rayford Johnson. I'm the director of ThugExposed.org and also the author of the uh, Ministry and Life Skills book, Thug Mentality Exposed. And we're doing something regular today that we usually don't do. Um, we asking for your support. As you see here, these are letters. These are requests from the county jail, from the prisons. Get them from juvenile hall all the time. Uh, for the book, Thug Mentality Exposed, which is a ministry life skills book, a book that I used when I worked at Department of Corrections uh, as a counselor. Uh, a book that I, I know the, the Holy Spirit uh, led me to write, um, to put together God's message, His wisdom, and His knowledge uh, to help people live a victorious life in Christ. So, like I said, we get these requests all the time. You can go... Um, online to our site and under the book tab and just see the testimonials that we're getting and we get these types of requests all the time I just got back to Folsom prison more requests uh, for, for the book they, a lot of the inmates are saying we're passing around the unit uh, people are getting saved and set free and delivered uh, from the information in the book all glory to God so we're asking for that and like I said there are expenses in the ministry um, as far as traveling, video production, and all types of other administrative uh, fees. But we'll give the book out. We give it out at cost. It costs a little over $5 to order the book at cost from the publisher. And, but nine, about $9.20 to mail it out. So a lot of the prisons require that we've got to mail, mail it out. So, like I said, those are expenses. Uh, but like I said, we're... we're Doing the Great Commission, we ask that you just partner with us and join with us doing the Great Commission. Uh, Jesus said, I was in prison and you came to see me. And many people, like I said, a lot of times it's hard for us to recruit people to go into the prison system. And that's okay. But we just ask that you just pray about sowing a seed into a ministry that is. Because you're that's just as important, you know, to support a ministry that is. Because like I said, it takes finances to do this uh, to do this mission. Um, we get no grants or contracts, so this is all totally uh, donations when you go into the prisons and the jails and, 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 and the juvenile halls. So we ask that you go to the website, buy, buy the book, um, buy the DVDs, make a commitment, just pray about making a commitment. We need monthly partners. I appreciate one-time partners, but these bills are reoccurring every month. So uh, I just wanted you to thank you for taking the time uh, to listen to me, and um, I just I just pray that you uh, be led to do it as the Lord tells you. And like I said, maybe it's uh, you know God is not telling you to give in the ministry. That's okay, but we just ask that you just uh, pray for us that we can move forward uh, to reaching more jails, more prisons. Um, making more video productions on there. We offer free resources online for parents, for schools, for churches. So, once again, thank you for listening to me. This is uh, Rafer Johnson, uh, the director of ThugExposed.org. God bless you.